Hi everybody, we're back to basics as I'm about to lead an interview in English of a rather original guy. Now have you ever watched the series How I Met Your Mother? Chris Elliott plays Lily's father in it. Now in case you haven't seen the series, he's the guy who plays the psycho stalker in There's Something About Mary. Now in the series, however, Elliot plays the parasite father, Lily's father, who was never there and instead focused all of his attention on, these, on creating wacky board games nobody was interested in. He never made it and he became a lousy father. Now, it made me laugh when I contacted Dan and found out, found out he had created a board game of his own. The only thing is, Dan is making a living from it and that's fantastic. Uh, he's an accomplished guy who lives the life he wants. His board game is called Better Me and I have it right here. I've tried it myself and it's just fantastic. It focuses on getting people to know each other better. It focuses on personal growth and I really suggest, I recommend it to anyone who's interested in that domain or just having a good time with some mates. He's sold a few thousand board games already and based on our talk a few days ago, he's only getting started. Now let's go meet the man behind the board game. Thanks. Thanks for accepting the interview today. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Appreciate it. You're the, if I can use the word, uh, the brilliant creator of the game Better Me. Thank you. Which is, <laughs> how, how much you say? Which is, oh wait, which is right over here. Which is right here, in case people missed it. <laughs> um, it's a fantastic game. Uh, you said it on Amazon. Mm -hmm. And uh, how's that working, by the way? Uh, it's great. Uh, I sell it also on my own website, but I sell much more on Amazon. It's just where people are, you know. Yeah. It's like having a store in your house versus having a store at the mall. Yeah, it's right. just where people are. You just get so much more traffic on Amazon, yeah. wouldn't you? Yeah. Um, yeah, and I actually tried the game this morning with my girlfriend, and we just we just loved the experience. Uh, That's good. Just fantastic. I like when you were telling me about that, that she didn't want to stop because you had to go do something. She's like, wait, wait, we're not done. Yeah, uh, yeah. Right. She's almost getting upset about it. <laughs> yeah. um, we which were, would be super ironic. Which was just start ironic. an argument over it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's funny, actually, because while we were discovering the game, um, all these great positive thoughts were coming out of the questions. And there was that there was that that nice positive vibe in the environment, and we had the feeling that we were learning more about each other yeah. than we had before. Yeah, uh, I find that even if people are really close, like you know, a girlfriend, boyfriend, or parents, brothers, sisters, you just don't usually talk about stuff like that. Mm. It seems like it takes some kind of prompt, or mm. you know, a game, you know, whatever, <clears throat> or like a crisis before you really talk about something like that. Mm -hmm. You know, like literally. Sometimes the first people say something important, it's like they're on their deathbed. Mm. And it's like, hmm, wouldn't it be nice if you said it like 50 years earlier than that? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, no, right, right. Yeah. Uh, let's talk more about the game. So um, who, 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 who usually plays this game? Uh, um, okay, from my experience, um, like in games I've played with, it's been mostly here in Chiang Mai. Right. So a lot of travelers, um, couples tend to come and like mm. it, um, or just people that are traveling together. And so friends, um, I played once in a game with my mom, but I haven't played with anybody else in my family, but I've heard stories from other people that played with their family, even kids, um, down, I would say usually probably like 14 years and older works well. Mm -hmm. I've, uh, I played with one 10 year old who had a good time, but her mom kind of coached her. Right, right. Um, but now that it's selling on Amazon, the people that I see who are buying it, it's a lot of counselors, um, mm -hmm. teachers, professors. Um, I actually just had a comment um, on Amazon, a review from a girl who bought it for her master's program. I can't remember, it was the title, the course she's taking, something cooperative learning was in the title. Right. There were more words, but um, which is perfect. And I thought it was really cool. She actually bought it for her class. Um, right. Yeah, and I've like, Assistant deans of universities are buying it, professors at Virginia Tech, blah, blah, blah. It's like, I could drop all these names. It makes me feel good. Ah, <laughs> you a, know? A... Um, somebody, I can't remember the name of it, but uh, uh, it, was an or it was like a medical organization for special needs people that was associated with Harvard Medical. I'm mm -hmm. like, whoa, hey. Mm -hmm. You know, I dropped out of college, but Harvard Medical wants my game. <laughs> oh, <laughs> cool. <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, uh, that's what I like about the game is the, the questions uh, that come up in the cards that you pick up are just fantastic and they, they make you do this little, this work on, on yourself, which, yeah. is, which is fantastic. The, 
I, where did you get all these questions? Where did you get all these ideas? How long did it take for you to, to build all these questions? Mm, yeah, um, I got them all over the place. Some of them just were things I had already practiced or learned about. You know, mm. like we both read a lot of books about things like this, and uh, you see different little, um, you know, life hacks or whatever. Mm. You know, things like gratitude journals, and mm. that bunch of books mention some of those. And then there's other um, questions in there, like asking to tell a story from your childhood or whatever. I mean, I Googled every, you know, self-improvement questions, personal development questions, just to get ideas. I looked through, we were talking about the book, The Success Principles is a really good one. Mm. Um, so things like affirmations, those are in a bunch of books, a bunch of videos. So a lot of, you know, a lot of these ideas have been around for a really long time and a bunch of people have talked about them. But the real idea behind the game um, was a lot of people, they'll read a book, like you might read The Success Principles and I might read it. But we're not sitting there discussing it together like in a book club or something, mm -hmm. you know. So you just kind of think about it on your own sitting at the couch, you know, and you don't really interact with other people. Right. So the game was designed to get people in a room to, to bring up these topics and have people actually do things, too. Like, it's not just discussion. You'll commit to, um, you know, taking actions and you know, helping a stranger or whatever. Mm. Yeah, that's a very good point. Uh, I've noticed in my readings that uh, you learn a lot of things, but a lot of the, the, the key to learning is to apply yeah. and there's a lot of exercises. Mm -hmm. And sometimes just doing it by yourself, you could you could be tempted to take shortcuts and yeah. actually not do them you know, at their full potential. Yeah. That's what I like about your game, actually. I know recognize some of the exercises and being part of the game and playing with someone else, you've actually got you actually got to do it? Yeah, yeah. You've got to actually it's, to do it. Have you ever been in a mastermind group or an accountability group? Or, no, or, never. Because never. it's it uses that concept of, mm. um, you know, like in the game, when you make a commitment, like the example that always comes to my mind is, I made a commitment once to give a flower to a stranger. And I think I remember that one because it made me feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. But I committed to doing it because I wanted the point in the heart category. Mm -hmm. And somebody in the game <laughs> was my accountability partner. So they weren't going to let me get off the hook, right? Mm -hmm. And I remember getting a flower. And on my way home from the immigration check-in that I had to do, I was like, I had these flowers, but I wasn't sure who to give it to. Mm -hmm. And it just made me feel super uncomfortable, man. I don't know. <laughs> but I gave it to a lady who was cooking in the back of the restaurant where I had lunch. Uh -huh. You know? Um, so anyway. Um, how did that go? It was great. She was happy. And I, I figured, like, I didn't want to do it in a way that, well, I live in Thailand, too, so, you know, there's little cultural differences. And, I'm like, I can't just walk up and like, give it to somebody's wife mm. when they're standing right there, right? Like, mm. but this was an older couple that they ran might, a restaurant. might tie the shit out of you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I figured these guys, like, they, the lady was probably in her 70s and her husband was, too. And I'm like, they're not going to take it as me, like, hitting on her. So it's safe. Mm. Anyway, so I just walked in the back of the restaurant. I was like, hey, here you go. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was cool. But anyway, my point was, um, if I just read that in a book, like you said, there's mm -hmm. a slim chance I would have ever done that. I would have mm -hmm. thought, oh, that's a cool idea. I give a flower to a stranger. But when somebody was holding me accountable, I was going to actually do it. Right, right. Do you use that accountability principle in your work? Or every day work? Um, sometimes. I tend to do that when I'm in a mastermind group, mm -hmm. which, you know, the ones I've been a part of usually are a weekly meeting. Mm -hmm. And... And you'll talk about work-related goals. You know, I'm going to do this by next Tuesday or whatever. Mm -hmm. So then I will use that kind of accountability. Lately, I haven't so much. Mm -hmm. um, but this game can be sort of a substitute for a group like that. Mm. Um, or if you're in a group like that, it could be a cool thing to play with your group. Mm. Okay. Okay, well, tell us more about the game, actually. So I was saying earlier that you know, this morning I had the feeling that there was a lot, a lot, a lot of work that had been put into the questions and yeah. the game overall. Right, I so, never answered your actual question. No, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, how did you get there, Dan? Um, so, you said you dropped out of college. Mm -hmm. um, do you ever? Did you ever live the nine to five uh, lifestyle? Uh, not really. I've had jobs, but um, you know, more part time jobs. Like when I was in college, I was a security guard in the evenings and that night. And, <clears throat> um, you know what I did before I came over to Thailand. I for about ten years I was in real estate as a realtor and a real estate investor. So like. Dividing land, building homes, you know, mm -hmm. buying, selling stuff. Good job. Uh, yeah, oh, it was job. it was pretty cool. Um, it can be stressful, but mm -hmm. it was interesting, and it's one of those things that you get out what you put in. Mm -hmm. There's no ceiling on your income, but there's also no floor. 
mm-hmm. you know, um, you can have months where you lose money because you're paying for your office space, you're paying for the copies you make, you're paying for your phone line, right. you're paying for the gas, you know, you go show people a hundred houses and they don't buy one. You're like, oh, wow, <laughs> <laughs> that's too bad. But um, I kind of like that sort of stuff where you, you get what you earn, you know, mm. you don't just punch in, punch out and do whatever to not get fired. Mm. Like you're trying to get better. You know? <clears throat> so anyway. Um, I was in real estate for 10 years, then I opened a flea market in my hometown, and that was the last thing I did before I came to Thailand. So I sold that flea market and came over here, okay. um, and that's when that's I really funny. had time to develop the game. Mm. So it had been an idea for probably five years or something. Right. So, so you, you, did you come, um, was it intentional for you to come to Thailand to develop the idea, or were you starting um, a trip? Uh, uh, yeah, the game was just like one of the things. So it was really, um, I came to Thailand for the first time maybe 2004 or five, mm-hmm. and I visited a lot in the winter, because I'm from a cold, rainy place. Mm. And um, I really liked Thailand, but I always had something that I had to come back for. Usually it was real estate, you know, I just yeah. had obligations. and. So I would go for a few weeks and then come back, and I always thought, man, if I could actually live there, that would be amazing. Mm-hmm. You know, I used to go to the islands and think, like, man, living on a tropical island, <laughs> especially <laughs> when it was winter back home. I'm from Washington State, north of Seattle, you know, near Vancouver. Oh yeah, and it's just cold. gray and cold, and and it sounded good. So anyway, I finally I was in a position where the only thing holding me to my hometown was that flea market, mm-hmm. and the manager that I had working with me. Um, I just decided it was actually because I was in a mastermind group talking it over with my friend mm-hmm. and I realized like, Hey, this is the perfect time. Like all I have to do is offer to sell the flea market to this manager guy mm-hmm. who already, like he barely listened to me anyway, right. but he already acted like he owned it, which was a bit of a problem actually. <laughs> but I was like, instead of struggling with this guy, I should just sell it to him and go to Thailand. And mm-hmm. so that's what I did. And actually, Again, like to endorse the accountability idea, mm-hmm. I was in a two-person mastermind group, just me and one guy. Uh, we used to both sell real estate in my hometown, but he mm-hmm. he lives in Australia now. Mm-hmm. And uh, it became so clear when I was talking with him, you know, when you try to get jumbled thoughts out of your head and explain it to somebody else, mm-hmm. you tend to get really clear. Mm-hmm. And it's like, this is the time. And so I just told him, like, by next week's meeting, I will have made him an offer. I can't really control if he accepts the offer, but I will make him a very good offer that I think he'll accept. And um, it happened in like 24 hours. So I was just like, why wait a week? You right. know, like I drew up the terms and, and just went and offered it to him and said, yeah, I'll take it. Yeah, straight. He just said, yeah. yeah. Wow. And so that made it so much quicker too because I didn't have to give notice to my landlord or like have a big clearance going out of business sale or anything. I'm just mm-hmm. like, here's the key. Have fun. <laughs> yeah. Good luck. I'm going to Thailand. Yeah, I, I went, I came over here with my mom, showed her around Thailand. And then I went home. And within three weeks, I was back on a plane coming over here to live here. Mm. I'd been yeah. telling her how great it was mm-hmm. for 10 years, probably. Mm-hmm. And so she finally came with me. And we went to Chiang Mai. We went down to Koh Phangan, a beautiful island. Um, spent a few days in Bangkok, which she actually liked. You know, There's oh, some nice it. places in Bangkok. Mm. In general, it's not my style. Mm. But there's one little neighborhood I like that's pretty mellow. Well, I guess it wasn't the Kelsan, right? No, it's actually right around the corner from it. Though. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, it's... Uh, <laughs> It's a quieter road within like a couple hundred meters of Kalsan, right, yeah. which is cool because Kalsan Road's, if you guys don't know, it's like the backpacker headquarters of Bangkok, mm. and it's cool because it's next to the river. You can take ferries all over town, and um, cheap food all over the place. Yeah. Anyway, no, so, but you always do Bangkok first mm. because you'll like the other places more. Mm-hmm. That's that's what I tell people. Yeah. Don't go to Bangkok last. Like if you go to the islands and you say, Oh yeah, and then we'll go back to Bangkok for four days before mm. no, you won't. Mm. You won't go back to Bangkok. <laughs> I definitely agree with that. Do it first <laughs> and then you'll go get on the island and you won't want to leave until the last possible minute. So anyway, yeah. I took her over here, I went back home and I was back over here in like three weeks. Okay. So it was easy. I was uh, living in the basement of the flea market, so I didn't have any kind of lease or you know, I didn't have to mess with any of that stuff. It was just like gone. Right. Yeah. Right. Awesome. Um, <laughs> then tell me more about, um, so, w- Better Me, the idea was in your head for, for a long time. Do you, would you say that you and, and, and personal development, you, go, you guys go way back? Uh, yeah, actually, um, when I, th- like people have asked me how I got into personal development, and I think it was, it's actually hard to say, but I remember really starting to get into it when I got into playing football, mm-hmm. um, and I would 
you know, watch things and read things, like Sports Illustrated even, mm -hmm. just reading the stories and reading like what NFL coaches were saying or mm -hmm. NFL players. I really liked football. Mm -hmm. And um, those guys were my role models, really. People like Jerry Rice, um, Phil Jackson, you know, Michael Jordan's coach. Mm -hmm. um, I would just kind of, oh, Rick Pitino back then, basketball coach. Mm -hmm. um, they all had like a lot in common. You know, they would talk about discipline, they would talk about, you know, you get what you earn, not what you want, you know. I mean, you've got another school of thinking, which is kind of like the law of attraction style, like, mm -hmm. you know, meditate about it, visualize it, and all that. And there's nothing wrong with visualizing stuff at all. Mm -hmm. But, like, there's a saying I really like, and I don't know who said it, but it was, when you pray, move your feet. Mm -hmm. You know, go ahead and do the prayer and the meditation, the visualization, whatever you call mm -hmm. it. But now get into action, you know? Mm -hmm. And I mean, if you expect like a Lamborghini to drop out of the sky, I don't know, man. Like, but if you look at <laughs> what you've already been given, like you've been given something, this might sound cheesy, but you've been given something way better than a Lamborghini. Like your mind, your hands. I mean, we have thumbs, we can pick stuff up. Like mm -hmm. we take all this stuff for granted. How does your eye work? Mm -hmm. You know, I dare you to go make an eye. Like, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. we have this toolkit. And you can, if you really want a Lamborghini, you can go get it because you have the toolkit. Mm -hmm. You know, that's not really what I care about. But if I did, I could go get a Lamborghini for sure. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, man, what was what was I talking about? Ah, uh, shit, I've lost it myself. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, yeah. Do we go way back? Do we, so yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, Sports Illustrated, watching ESPN when I was a kid. You know, the interviews after like Super Bowls. You, you know, people mm -hmm. like um, the names have changed, of course, but they tend to say a lot of the same things and like. Um, sports are kind of like a microcosm for life, I think, mm -hmm. you know, um, and you see people like, you know, Peyton Manning, Tom Brady, these names might not be, you know, these are like future Hall of Fame guys mm -hmm. and they have a lot in common. Mm -hmm. So, um, Tony Robbins, mm -hmm. he, I think it's his saying like success leaves clues, you know? Mm -hmm. So like, check these guys out. They'll tell you, mm -hmm. you know, most of them like to get back and tell you what they did and what worked. And so, um. Yeah, for me, it's like, I'm not totally crazy about it. Like, I, I'm not reading a new book every day or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But I think it's like a marathon, not a sprint. Mm -hmm. And if you just improve a little bit, like, you know, again, this one's cheesy too, but, you know, if you improve 1%. Okay, so I talked about Jim Rohn, you know, the planting season, which for me was um, when I first got here and I was trying to figure out how to pay my bills. Mm -hmm. I was busy. I was working a lot. Um, right now, I feel like I'm in the summer season. Um, I have can kind of rest a little more and enjoy and do little trips and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and I was saying that <clears throat> I've seen people kind of, um, when they should be planting, they come over here and they get caught up in distractions and they're going to all the events. There's In Chiang Mai, there's this community of digital nomads and there's always like people going out for drinks. Somebody's always leaving, so there's always like a going away party for so-and-so. Mm -hmm. And like yesterday, there was a pool party from the people I played volleyball with. Like. I could have gone to that. I mean, it started at 10 in the morning and they didn't quit until 10 at night. You know, mm -hmm. I could have, but for me, it was like, you know, it's Thursday. So I worked and went to the gym. Right. And, you know, I didn't work a 12 hour day. I probably worked, I don't even know, somewhere between four and six hours. Um, but it's just those little decisions kind of add up, mm -hmm. I think. And um, I don't want to be a workaholic, but I also know that it's pretty easy to get very distracted here. Mm -hmm. And when you don't, when you work for yourself, you know, there's no, there's no boss to fire you if you don't come to work mm -hmm. one day. Mm -hmm. So um, anyway, a little self-discipline is a good thing. I think. A little self-discipline. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, um, but, you know, on the other hand, like I went to Malaysia for 10 days or whatever. And all I really did was check my emails and do a like maybe an hour of work a day. Okay. Maybe two if it was like a rainy day, mm -hmm. you know. <clears throat> um, so I can do that. You can do that, okay. yeah. But yeah. I don't want to do that like all the time because in the long term, it's probably not. It's not the, the right thing to do. Thing. Yeah. Where do, Where do you work? Do you work every day in the same place? You I work at home. home. You work at home. Unless I'm traveling, then I. But I, if the Wi-Fi is good enough, I always would rather work in my hotel room than like. I mean, in theory, going to a co-working space or a coffee shop with fast internet or something seems. Um, kind of productive, I guess, mm -hmm. and it seems fun. You know, people always post. Um, pictures of like my office of the day. It's like they're all trying to have the nicest office of the day. Yeah. That's like a thing. You see people say that. It's like right. it's probably a hashtag too. Yeah. Office of the day. Yeah. Oh look, I'm on a cliff overlooking the waves and blah blah blah. Yeah. Like, okay, 
But, you know. I'll be getting some work done. <laughs> yeah, and how long did it take you to, did you get lost on the way there? Because you don't live in the neighborhood. And, uh -huh. You know, did you get a flat tire on the way there? And, mm -hmm. like, did you get a sunburn while you were trying to find it? Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, for me, it's a lot like my routine when I'm at home. I'm up, I drink some water, I get some, I mean, sometimes I don't eat anything until, like, two in the afternoon. Sometimes I eat just a little bit, mm -hmm. but not enough to get tired. You know, like some fruit or, like, peanut butter type stuff. Right, right. And, um, and then I'm working for a while, and... You know, by the time somebody got to their office of the day, I've worked for an hour, mm. you know, which isn't a lot, but like, yeah. and then fuck office of the day. It's coffee shop of the day. Oh. It's beach of the day, right? Mm -hmm. Like if I'm on a trip and I don't need to work a full day, mm -hmm. then, you know, I'll work two hours in the morning at my hotel room and then I'll just leave the laptop and go to the beach, mm -hmm. not look at it while I'm working. Okay. It's not that there's anything wrong with that. No, if that's no, your style. No, if and, that's your style. And some people, they say that they get distracted when they try to work from home. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, like, I don't know if it's the TV or if it's their dog or what, but mm -hmm. for me, it's the opposite. Like, I get distracted if I'm at a coffee shop or if I'm at a co-working space. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's just, I like routine. I'm kind of, like, into being efficient and not wasting a lot of time mm -hmm. and energy. Like, some coffee shops don't have enough outlets. Mm -hmm. And... Okay, so now you can only work for an hour and a half, and then you have a dead battery. Mm -hmm. You know, just little things like that all the time. Or their Wi-Fi is down today, and you didn't know that until you got there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, for me, I'm all about, like, I know I have a good internet connection here. The only time I go to a co-working space is if something, my internet's out at home. Mm -hmm. But I just get it done, you know, and then I go do whatever with the rest of my life. Let's talk also about um, what are some of the little, little tricks that you have to keep you going every day. Um, I mean, surely you have bad days. Um, you once mentioned to me that you often had your visual board and that you use alpha affirmations. How often do you actually use these tools? Yeah, um, you know, it kind of comes and goes, honestly. Like, mm -hmm. um, I have some affirmations and, like, mantra-type things written on the wall in my bathroom. Mm -hmm. I have tiles. And actually, this is a great little tip. If you have tiles in your bathroom, like white or light colored mm -hmm. tiles, you can use dry erase pens on them. Oh, really? It's oh, awesome. Good. Yeah, it's like my whole bathroom is a big white. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's in the other one. Oh, right. um, you can't see it from here, but you know, I put things in there like <clears throat> some of my little mantras um, that can help with a tough day. S W S W S W S W. I used to have that on the wall in my real estate office, mm -hmm. and the reason I didn't—it's just an abbreviation because I didn't want all my clients to know what it meant. Mm -hmm. um, but I got this from Jack Canfield, actually. I think in the success principles, maybe. Uh huh. So S W S W S W S W stands for some will, some won't. So what? Someone's waiting. So uh -huh. if a bunch of people are giving me shit, like I promote my game in Facebook groups and all over the place, and you know, or if I get a bad review on Amazon or something, which actually I haven't gotten one yet. Uh -huh. but the worst uh -huh. I got is a three star, where he was actually pretty positive. Oh right. It's right. just three means like good or something, uh -huh. and five means excellent. Okay. But we all know three isn't that great. Like <laughs> anyway, yeah. So. I just remember, like, if somebody doesn't like my game or they's like, quit spamming our Facebook group, even though their Facebook group is called, like, self-improvement, and my <laughs> game is a self-improvement game, and I'm offering it for free on the website, which I didn't mention yet, mm -hmm. um, um, who cares what that guy thinks? Because mm -hmm. that's not the last SW that someone's waiting. That, that wasn't that guy. Okay. That guy's having a bad day or whatever. Okay. You know, and sometimes it does. I, I take things personally sometimes. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not the best, thickest skin guy in the mm -hmm. world. I know people who are better at being like, fuck that guy, mm -hmm. you know? And I'm just like, wait, is he right? You know, am I, am I a bad person? Because I'm spamming the Facebook group. And I'm like, wait, wait, no, no, no. And then I remember, I actually have this written on my wall too in the bathroom, the people that are like super enthusiastic about my game. Mm -hmm. So if I'm ever like, oh man, I, I feel bad. Like these people think I'm spamming. And then I look at this list of people who found me in a Facebook group and love it and like started a local group and they play once a month, mm -hmm. you know, I'm like, no, 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 that's who I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if some people don't like it. Mm -hmm. Definitely. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So S W S W S W. So repeat that. That's someone. Uh, wait, now I can't remember. Um, someone will, some will, some mm -hmm. won't. So what? Someone's waiting. Okay. So that's that key at the end. Is someone's waiting. Like that's what keeps you going. Cause there's literally some person out there who <clears throat> like, runs a wellness center in Adelaide, Australia. This mm. is a real person who is now doing monthly Better Me games and loves it. But like, if I wouldn't have posted on Facebook that day, she wouldn't know about it. That's amazing. You know, yeah. so tomorrow might be the next one. Mm. You know? So that keeps you going. Yeah, that, that's, yeah. that's good. So that's like a form of an affirmation kind of. Mm. And affirmations are great. Um, a lot of like really high performing people use them. Mm -hmm. And um, 
that can turn these like <clears throat> if you're having doubts or like negative thoughts creeping around in your mind it's kind of like you can't just say i think i'm probably stealing this from jack canfield too you can't think like you can't close your eyes and say don't see a pink elephant don't see a pink elephant don't see a pink elephant like that doesn't work mm. so if you're thinking like oh don't think negatively about my new business don't worry about money don't whatever you know like don't think about that you need to replace it with something mm -hmm. so one of the things i replace it with is sw 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 you know just to keep me focused and it might be the next facebook group i post in or it might be the next email i send or whatever mm. that amounts to something mm. <clears throat> so i also try to remember that big things are just lots of little things so just take that next step it's all just little steps you know it's one little email it's editing one photo or you know it's tweaking your keywords on an Amazon listing or whatever. Mm, mm. It's not a big deal, but if you just keep taking steps, it adds up, mm. you know, the journey of a thousand miles type of thing, right? Yeah, I'll bear that in mind as well. When I yeah. get a bit, um, yeah, <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> upset if it's a bit slow. Yeah, mm. I think that's a good way to deal with overwhelm. It's like, just take the next step. Mm. There's a Martin Luther King quote, which <clears throat> I might not get it perfect, but it's something like, you don't need to see the whole staircase, just take the next step in faith. Mm -hmm. like. You know, it, you're climbing a mountain and you're on the trail. And maybe it's a cloudy day and you don't, you can't see the summit or whatever. Mm -hmm. There's another cheesy one, like you can't always see the summit from the valley. Mm -hmm. But you're on the trail and there's an arrow that says summit this way. Mm -hmm. And or you're with a guide who's been there before and he's like, yeah, we just need to go this way. Like, it doesn't matter if you don't totally understand it. You don't need to know every little turn the trail's going to take. Like, mm -hmm. just take that next step. You yeah. know? Yeah. Even if you get off course, you can figure it out. Go back. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. <clears throat> Still good. It's still good. Um, yeah. So, so we were saying earlier that um, every time you get a bit overwhelmed by fear or by all these anxieties, just take action. Yeah. Right. 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 I was comparing it to uh, I don't know. I think it's a metaphor, right? I always screw up metaphor versus analogy and whatever. <clears throat> but I think we have a lot of primal stuff going on in our mm -hmm. mind, in our emotions, and um, I think a lot of times people pretend like we're a lot less animal than we really are. Mm -hmm. And so like, if you're worried about money or maybe your product hasn't sold as much in the last month as you would like, mm -hmm. I think we're wired. Like we're here because our ancestors, when they heard a rustle in the bushes, they thought that might be a tiger, mm -hmm. even if it's a raccoon. Mm -hmm. But the guy who thought like, Oh, I'm sure it's just a raccoon. I'm just going to go back to sleep. That guy isn't around anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. It's usually going to be a raccoon, mm -hmm. but it is good to like, you know, get your spear and look that way just in case it's not. Mm -hmm. So um, I think we tend to think like, oh my God, I haven't sold anything for three days. What's going on? Mm -hmm. um, that's like, I haven't found any food for three days is how your mind kind of interprets that. Mm -hmm. Like, that's a problem for survival. Like, oh my God, I'm going to die. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like those emotions, they're the same. You know, we get the adrenaline thing. And, um, so what you would do back then if you haven't found food for three days is get off your ass and go walk and look for food. Mm -hmm. And so instead of sitting around the fire, I thinking about, Oh my God, I don't have any food. Like I have this fire, but nothing to cook. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, well then start walking. Mm -hmm. Right. Like just go. And even if you haven't found any food, like the first hour you're walking around, like, Hey, you know, I feel a little better now, mm -hmm. you know? And then like, Ooh, there's some animal tracks. Like, mm -hmm. Oh, Hey, that's promising. That gives me hope. Like I'm going to follow those tracks. And like literally, uh, I don't remember where I heard all this, but like you see animal tracks, you're going to have a little hit of dopamine. Like, mm -hmm. Ooh, that's what I was looking for. Mm -hmm. You know, ooh, ooh, ooh. you know, it's like maybe the first couple clicks you get on your ad campaign or whatever. Mm -hmm. Who, who's your audience? Are they like people that sell stuff online or just personal development addicts or, um, uh, personal development addicts. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, you know, maybe the example of like your first ad click doesn't apply to most people, but, um, you know, you, you see some little result or some g little hint of hope. And like, ooh, now I have a reason to, you know, because maybe I was getting tired, but I just found some tracks, so now I'm more motivated to keep mm -hmm. going. Mm -hmm. You just, you see a little positive feedback of some kind. Um, maybe if you're like, you know, the, the cliche, like I'm trying to lose 20 pounds or whatever. So you don't, you don't weigh yourself for like a week and you come back and you're like, ooh, I lost two pounds. Like, mm -hmm. hey, you know, for a week, that's not bad because that's eight pounds in a month, right? Like, hey, all right. So now I feel like, yeah, I'm going to go get on the treadmill or whatever mm -hmm. it is, you know? Um, but if you didn't go to the gym that first day, you never would have lost those two pounds. And right, right. It's that spiraling up. It's that like that cycle, mm -hmm. which can go either direction. You know, it's like oh, I gained two pounds. Oh fuck it, it's not worth it. I'm just not going to try. Versus like, you know, 
you can set, here's another little trick I like, you set ridiculously low goals. Mm -hmm. um, there's a fancy term for it, but um, basically your goal literally could be to go to the gym three days this week. Like literally, you don't even have a goal about how much you're gonna run on the treadmill or if you're gonna lift weights, none of that. You're just, you're gonna walk in the door. And if you're really super tired and literally on your way home, you just go in the door and say, I don't wanna be here, you leave, technically you hit your goal. Mm -hmm. But who actually does that, right? If you walk in the door, you're, even if you're really tired, you're probably gonna at least like walk a mile. Mm -hmm. You might not run five miles, mm -hmm. but you might walk one, mm -hmm. or you might even just stretch. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and you're kind of building this habit of like, I'm a person who goes to the gym, you know, it's, and then maybe you're tired. So all you do is walk a mile, but you meet a friend at the gym mm -hmm. and now you're like, oh, now I'm looking forward to going there tomorrow to talk to that person. Like, it's just these tiny little decisions that, that start to add up. Mm. So, yeah. That's, that's interesting. Um, sorry, sorry. Yeah. yeah. So just take those first little tiny steps. They don't have to be anything earth shattering. Mm -hmm. You'll gain momentum over time, mm -hmm. you know, like this game. It started out as an idea on a Google Doc. And then <clears throat> when I first started it, it was just like some different colored highlighters and a big piece of paper. And I kind of drew it out. You know, it took a while. It took like a year and a half or so before it was actually on Amazon. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. There's a lot of, I can see there's a lot of work behind it. Definitely. Yeah. So. And if I was like, okay, I have to create this game in a month, mm. you know, I would have probably flipped out. But mm. it was like, no, I'm just going to, okay, today I'll make the Google Doc mm. and I'll figure out which categories I'm going to. You know, okay, heart, mind, body, people, tangibles. Okay, cool. You know, and now I'm, I've got those categories in Google Doc, and when I think of something good, I'll go, hmm, which category does that belong in, you know? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I'll put that under the people category. Oh, cool, now I have, like, 21 cards instead of 20, you know? Mm -hmm. There's, like, 270, but they came over a long while. Right, right, right. And so I'm going to rewind a bit and just come back to what you were saying about the tribe, uh, mm -hmm. the, you know, the animal world, almost, yeah. the, and you were talking about that person that stays around the fire, that person who says, uh, who kind of complains about uh, not getting any food and not doing much. What would you tell that person? Uh, would you tell that person anything? Like, let's go. Let's I guess that's why you need a tribe, right? Mm. Because, I mean, again, if we're talking about like humans thousands of years ago or whatever, it's usually not going to be one guy sitting around the fire. You know, that's why that guy has a tribe is because the other, maybe he's bummed out. Maybe last week somebody else was bummed out, right? Mm. But it's like, hey man, like, we're going hunting now. Pick up your spear, mm. you know? Oh, okay, you know? If you were just sitting there alone, maybe you wouldn't have gone, but that's why you have your tribe, mm. uh, you know? Can that person be helped, or can that person only help, her, you know, itself, herself, himself? Well, I think if that person is, like, around people that help to uplift them, mm. like, that's something you can do, is get around people, um, like the example of going to the gym or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, actually, I wanted to mention this too. So whatever it is you want to do, like for me, I wanted to know more people that had online businesses mm -hmm. so I could get better and learn and all that. And so that's why I'm in Chiang Mai. And if I would have sat in my hometown and said, you know, like, oh, there's got to be like one person somewhere in Bellingham, Washington, that's mm -hmm. kind of doing what I want to do. And there might be. But um, in general, the people, like say you want to relocate, your, your people in your hometown might oh, that's crazy, blah, 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 you don't want to do that, that's risky. Mm -hmm. And they, you know, it's natural that they think that way because they're the ones that didn't do it, mm. you know. But when you move to Chiang Mai or whatever your version of that is, the, the people who think like you and agree with you are there waiting for you. Right, right. You know, there was a, I met a girl on Couchsurfing, um, which is a really great website if you travel, mm -hmm. and I find free places to stay. I was already in Thailand and she was thinking about traveling in Asia and maybe even living there. But everybody in her family was telling her she was crazy. Mm. You know, what are you talking about? You have a good job. She lived in Texas, I think Dallas. Um, she had some corporate job, pretty good, had, you know, health care and all that. Oh, and you're going to give up all that to just go do what in Thailand? You know, of course, she didn't know what yet because she wasn't there. Well, so she doesn't have a good answer for that. Well, what are you going to do when you get there? How are you going to make money? Uh, I'm not sure. Well, you know what? The people who can help you with that are there already, right? And the people in Texas don't know. So if you're asking the people in Texas about how to live in Thailand, like you're asking the wrong people. So whatever it is you want to do, find the people who have done it, even if at first you're just finding them like on Facebook or something, you know, and you can usually find somebody who's willing to help and answer some questions. And so for this girl, that was me. And I told her the same thing. I said, don't listen to people in Texas. They don't know what they're talking about. And there's no risk in just coming to check it out for a few weeks. And if you don't like it, go back to Texas. 
Um, so she came over and she's now a teacher. I think the last I saw she was in Korea. Mm -hmm. She taught in Thailand for a while. Uh, she might be in Cambodia. I don't know. But she's still in Asia. She's having a great time teaching little kids English. Mm -hmm. And she's happy, mm -hmm. you know. And she didn't listen to the people in Texas who didn't know what they were talking about. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with, like, if you want to live in Texas, then ask the people in Texas, right? Right, right. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, so, you know, for instance, I have someone in my family who's a musician, and um, you probably advise that person to go live in a place where music is dominant. I get well, it depends. Like, if they just enjoy it as a hobby, you know, mm. like, then they don't have to. Mm. But if they're like, they want to be a musician and that's how they want to like live their life and earn their living and spend all their time doing that, mm -hmm. like, yeah, I get around people who have figured that out somehow. Okay. And I don't know that well. Maybe it seems like. In certain, you know, there's maybe you go to Austin, or if you're a country guy, you might need to go to Nashville mm. or LA or whatever, Seattle. Mm. Um, yeah. Okay. Just, I mean, I don't know. A lot of times, the worst case scenario isn't as bad as people think. So, if it's music for you and you pick, you know, I'm gonna go to Austin because there's, you know, a lot of music going on there, a lot of people that support music, and it doesn't work out, then you know, go back to your hometown and beg mm. your boss for your job back. And if he says no, get a different job. Like, mm -hmm. come on, you know? It's get moving. Yeah, yeah, I mean we we have these like if you don't shine a light on the boogeyman, like people fear change, you know, we have this fear of loss, fear of rejection, whatever. But okay, let's take the musician guy, for example. If he goes to Austin, mm -hmm. gets booed off the stage, <laughs> like he can leave Austin, he'll never see those people again. There might be a YouTube video of it, that sucks, but mm -hmm. you know, whatever. <laughs> and you go back home. Beg your job for, or your boss for your job back. If he says no, you might get a crappier job. So what happened? You don't have to live with the thought that you could have tried something mm -hmm. and you never did. So you tried. You know ah, that sucked. I didn't like it. Mm -hmm. You know I went home. I have a slightly crappier job now. Like okay, well you know keep an eye out for a better job. It's mm -hmm. not the end of the world. The game's not over. You know. And another thing that might sound cliche, like what did you really risk? Like so far, everybody that's lived for, you know thousands, hundreds of thousands of years, however long humans have been around, they've all died, mm -hmm. right? And maybe we'll figure, maybe we'll extend life, you know, maybe we'll all be living 400 years or something, but we're probably all going to die someday. Right, right. So what are you really risking? Mm -hmm. You know, like what's, why would you not try the things you want to try in this limited amount of time that you have on earth? Mm. I mean, there might be some good answers to that. Like, you know, maybe base jumping, you know, well, you might die, you might become paralyzed, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Yeah, those are extreme examples. But if you're just talking about like moving or changing jobs, just try it. I don't know, man. Life's short. At the end, we're going to die. Yeah. <laughs> well, what I, liked, what I liked about our first meeting, Dan, is that we also talked about books. I was telling you that I was reading The Magic of Thinking Big mm -hmm. uh, from Dr. Schwartz, and uh, you've referred a lot to uh, the success principles. Yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. um, if, if I had to ask you what would be the two books you would suggest, recommend to people that you know, want to have a more responsible uh, way of living or a more personal way of living and want to start their business, what, what would you recommend to these folks? Yeah, okay. Um, well, there's a lot. The first couple that come to mind. Oh, um, you, can, you can shoot 10 if you sure. want. Sure. Yeah. So The Alchemist is one of my personal favorites. Right. Like, you ever yeah. read that? Yeah. Yeah. Did I already mention that? Yeah, last time we mentioned. Okay. Yeah. So I won't ruin the whole storyline, but um, if you haven't read The Alchemist, it's one of my favorites. And he, there's a situation where he has to make a choice. Mm. There's a very clear like, do I go right or do I go left here? Mm -hmm. And uh, he couldn't like go halfway right, so he had to make a leap of faith. And I really identified with that. Mm. Um, <clears throat> I'm trying to think how much I can say without ruining it. <laughs> Um, I remember it was with the cattle, wasn't it? The uh, sheep. The sheep. Right? Yeah. So he had to make a big decision. He basically, it was kind of like a situation now where like, the guy couldn't keep his job and go mm -hmm. traveling. He had to like, either quit his job and go traveling or stay in his job and not go traveling. Mm -hmm. Kind of like that. Um, and I really identified with that mm -hmm. choice. And when I sold my flea market, that felt like me getting rid of my flock of sheep. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and the alchemist is just written in a very like quick easy to read way it just keeps going I, I actually found it on YouTube and uh, listened to the whole thing in one night it was like four hours long I just oh, listened right. to it straight <clears throat> and so anyway The Alchemist is great because um, it's inspiring but it's also a story and people tend to remember stories rather than like facts and mm. this, you know this study and that study which can be interesting but like that story stuck with me mm -hmm. and I remember that point in the book where he's like hmm 
chic or other thing. Like, mm. Mm, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so I like that. <clears throat> um, I think there's a reason that, like, we use story, like, you know, fables and the Greek myths and all that. You can learn and use these stories and they really just stick with you. Mm-hmm. You can connect with them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, which is really not like the other book you mentioned, Success Principles, mm-hmm. um, which is really a lot of specific practical stuff, like how to write an affirmation, um, how to form a mastermind group. I've actually formed quite a few mastermind groups and I use the format that he lays out in that book. I'd love to join one of them. Yeah, I'm not in one right now, but maybe, actually, I was thinking I might mention that to you. Maybe we should start one. That'd be good. Um, a lot of times they only go for a few months, and mm-hmm. then that's kind of it. Okay. Um, just because people move on and whatever. Right. Um, but, yeah, so there's a bunch of practical stuff in there. It's by Jack Canfield. I mm-hmm. highly recommend that book. It's thick. It's like a textbook. Um, and they're so they're very different. And he tells stories in there, too, of course. Mm-hmm. But uh, those are the first two that come to mind. Of course, there's a million more. Okay. The Magic of Thinking Big, it's been a long time since I read it. Um, I can't remember if Donald Trump actually recommended that book, but it's it's along mm. the lines of what he talks about a lot. Oh, does he? Okay. okay. And, yeah, uh, I think I think I did see a quote mm. about him talking about uh, you're bigger than you think you are, which comes up. Yeah, and thing. if you're gonna do something, you might as well do something big. In mm. general, and this isn't always true. That's right. That's but right. in general, like in real estate or other types of business, a lot of times the worst case scenario is like you go to zero, uh-huh. like uh, you lose all your money. Mm. But if you go big, you might make you know, whatever big is for you. Maybe a small shop would be something where you might make $10,000 and a big shop might be something where you have the chance to make a million. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you're going to zero either way is your downside. Mm -hmm. So, like, why wouldn't you do the thing that has the big shop? Right. You know? Right. Um, Then again, you can go to less than zero in real estate. Mm -hmm. I've done it. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know? (laughs) So, whatever. But you get the idea. Like, if you're going to put effort into something, you might as well go for something with a big potential. Mm. You know, like, um, <clears throat> you're going to start a restaurant or you could, the, even when you're opening your first location, you could think, oh, I might franchise this someday. So mm-hmm. I'm going to like lay it out in a way that lends itself to becoming a thousand restaurants later or a hundred or whatever. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so the magic of thinking big is a cool one. It's a classic. Yeah. And a lot of my favorite books are like this thick and mm-hmm. that's one of them. Mm-hmm. Um, thinking Grow Rich isn't that thick. That's another classic mm-hmm. people talk about a lot. The Alchemist is really short. Mm-hmm. Oh, The Four Agreements is another one. Right. Yeah, that's a very small book. Right. Um, and Did you read any Dale Carnegie books? Or I have, yeah. 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 Um, a lot of people love um, uh, How to Win Friends and Influence Friends, People. Yeah, right. uh, and I guess, yeah, th- I've read that. I didn't mm-hmm. find it that earth-shattering, to be honest. Mm-hmm. I guess a lot of it just seemed like common sense to me. Yeah. I remember the story about the kids at the bonfire in the park. Right, yeah. And I read it recently, so I remember yeah. it too. Mm-hmm. So if you want them to put the fire out because you're afraid they're going to start a forest fire, like being an asshole and yelling at them is probably not going to work. Mm-hmm. They're going to be like, screw you, old man. Right. Get yeah, out of here. They'll, be, they'll feel resentment. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But if you're like, hey, guys, uh, I'm glad you're having a good time, blah, blah, blah. But did you notice that there's a bunch of pine needles next to you? Like, I, I want you guys to have fun, but like, mm-hmm. I'm also a little bit worried, you know. And then, but maybe they didn't think about it because maybe they're kind of drunk or like mm-hmm. just help them out you know like mm-hmm. watch out there's a bunch of dry pine needles right behind you like that's a much different approach than yelling at kids and like you idiots you're gonna burn down the park right you know but i guess to me that seemed kind of common sense right right, right. <laughs> so, yeah if you have a hard time communicating with people that might be a great book okay okay cool Dan. Mm-hmm. um i think that's the end of the interview cool thank you so much if anybody would like to buy your game better me how would they do that uh better me mm-hmm. and i think we're going to work out a promo code Mm-hmm. so that they can get 10% off. So okay. that'll probably be like right here. That's about it, guys. Thank you for joining and watching this very inspirational video with Dan O'Donnell. Um, we didn't finish the, re- the recording properly there, so he's um, he's setting his game better me on his website. Um, let me know if you want to buy it. You can just click on this link that's right here, or and you can get a, a 10% discount code. Uh, the other thing is you can also get it for free, he offers this printout of it and uh, guard card that you can also print out. Thanks again for joining this, um, this, uh, this interview. Uh, there's going to be plenty more interviews coming up, so f- please feel, sure, feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel to um, keep up to date with the future interviews. There you go guys, stay inspired and have a great life.